Probably the most drastic new feature of Pyramix version 9 is the new mixer user interface. Um, we've done a pretty much a complete overhaul of the uh, the, the, the coloring structure, the, the, the visual structure of it all, um, to try and bring a better mix in the box uh, experience um, to the to the version 9 software. So first off, and, and probably the most most visual change is the update of coloring uh, for tracks uh, with timeline connections. So each uh, timeline connected strip now appears uh, with this entire strip colored uh, in the same manner as the timeline track is. So um, much more visual, much more easy to see uh, what you're controlling anywhere on the entire mixer strip from top to bottom. Uh, we also then have another mode which we can go into uh, which shows us bus coloring as well. Um, so that if we were to want to do mastering work where we're actually using smaller amounts of replay tracks but bigger amounts of bus outputs, we can use the same idea but viewing the buses as strips uh, instead. So this coloring shift has now extended to the VCA groups as well. So you can see here uh, there's a VCA group available to me. Um, that VCA group is colored yellow. So if I pop into here and I put some things into yellow, so you'll see that the drums now are entering my drum group. They're all getting tracked yellow. Um, I've also I've got a guitar here. So if I put these into the guitar, you can see oops, uh, if I, uh, guitar groups. And you can see that they're now colored purple as well. So when I move them, I, I get everything to move. And we can see the, the visual reference between them. Uh, and if I have multiple groups added, you can just see that you get multiple strip colors, uh, or multiple color strips uh, on the actual uh, fader itself. So the next change that we've made is, as you can see, the entire mixer now exists in sections. So these sections are the uh, IO and VCA section. Uh, the automation section, which we'll get to in a second, uh, the fader section, the inserts section, the aux and subgroup section, so we've now combined auxiliaries and subgroups into the same section to better represent what they do, and then the buses section up at the top. We've also done some work to make sure that the collapsing and uncollapsing of the mixer doesn't affect uh, those of you who are using very big mixers and are, are running out of screen real estate. So first off, uh, in the buses section, we've got a little plus key up here that allows us to set the focus to different buses. So we can choose the one we want to look at at any given moment. In the auxiliary sections, we can see that we've now got peak meters as well. So each aux that's feeding an aux master or a subgroup feeding a subgroup master, you can see the peak value uh, attributed to it. And by clicking on a peak meter, we actually uncollapse that exact aux that we want to use uh, in order to affect uh, the level um, and then of course now we also have panning available as well. Um, in the insert section <coughs> you can now see that we've got uh, uh, plug-in boxes that we add into so um, whilst they're still linear they now allow for left clicking so much more easy in terms of addition of plugins. The next major change to the version 9 mixer is the automation modes per strip. Uh, previously, we were able to change automation modes on a global scale. Now we can do them on a per strip basis. So whilst I can have one in latch, I can have another in touch, I can place this one into trim, and so on and so forth, allowing me uh, much more uh, advanced controls over my automation system. As well, we can enable the release mode per strip, allowing us to either uh, auto-release, snap, right to next, right to end, um, along with the automation mode. So we've got the automation mode per strip, but we also then have a security feature which allows you to lock parameters away from that strip mode should you see it n uh, necessary. So probably the most important one is isolating busing structures. Uh, busing that you're using that isn't affected by pan or by changes, ones that you're using to affect uh, deliverables, subbing, mono DMEs, down mixes, so on and so forth. So what we're able to do at that point is we can right click on a bus, go to automation, and we've got different modes we can put a parameter into. So for this bus, I'm now, I can either follow the strip mode or put it hard into record, read, or in this case, isolate. And you can see isolate changes the coloring to show me very, very specifically that uh, this is now not part of my automation system. The version 9 mixer is now also able to have multi-select. So I can select a range or I can select holding control uh, various faders within a section. 
once I have my multi-selection done, I can do things like uh, holding shift and control to, to affect the change to all. I can record ready. I can double click to re-zero. Um, but very importantly as well, I can also make relative changes. That's really handy if you just want to do an overall change really quickly without connecting a VCA group and things like this. Uh, and this works on any section where there's either a, uh, an on-off or a uh, relative change to be made. This also extends to the busing. So here on the busing I've got uh, one, two, three, and four connected in this monobus. So you can see one is connected to one, two connected to two, three to three, four to four. Now I'm just going to disconnect those because I want to show you about connecting across this range manually. Uh, sorry, uh, automatically. Um, holding down shift and control again does the same to all and again clicking on it again removes it but holding down control and alt then stripes the selection so one to one two to two three to three so on and so forth so being able to 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 do this across ranges of your mixer becomes much easier and makes building bigger mixers uh, a much more simple task the last little bit about the multi-select involves uh, reconfiguration of the mixer after you've set it up. So what I'm able to do now, holding down Shift, Control, and Alt, is make a move left or right of strips and place them wherever I see fit. It involves a rebuild of the mixer, but it's quick. Probably the most out there feature that uh, we've added into the version 9 mixer is what we're calling um, signal flow coloring, or signal flow. Um, what this is, is the ability for us to visualize in a mixer where our signals are going. So by highlighting a strip you can see now that the peak meter by default is turning to a different color and then each peak meter that has signal from that strip going through it has also then changed to that same color and if I change to another strip uh, that has a different routing so let's just say change to that one you can now see that I've now got a change in the f additional strips which are showing the signal going through it. What this allows us to do is it allows us to quickly check where our signal is going through the mixer. Is it going to an aux? Which master bus output is it going to? Um, so that we can quickly address uh, any problems or issues about finding signals, especially in large mixers. Uh, this works for individual strips. This also works across a range. So while I choose a range, then that shows where the entire range is going to. And it works backwards for buses. So if I select my monobus, I can see what's going through the monobus. If my stereo bus, again, I see what's going through that. So being able to see where the signal goes during playback is, of course, of great advantage. But this tool also extends to when I'm actually configuring my mixer. So now with no signal running through it at all, I can then choose my FL button, the signal flow button over here, which disables all the coloring uh, that I'd previously set up with my strip colors and, and, and the rest, and instead simply shows me uh, coloring for connected buses and other bits and pieces that exist in the mixer. And again, this works for the range. So we can see here that I'm connected to my subgroups and my monobus and my stereo bus. And we can see here that I'm simply connected into my stereo bus. But should I turn on this subgroup and turn it up? then we can see that my subgroup 2 becomes available uh, as part of this routing as well. So again, this is, this is a, for larger mixer creation and for con uh, configuring for, for a big mix in the box session, this becomes much easier in terms of keeping track of where you are. Going back to playback and making the selection, so we'll just get rid of AFL. I've got my peak meters up, but maybe I've got a gigantic mixer and I want to be able to just condense the view very quickly to see what's going on. So rather than simply clicking on the FL button, if I hold down control and do the same, I collapse my mixer to seeing exactly what actually contains audio that I'm dealing with at that moment. Um, and again, control and click on the FL button uncollapses the mixer again. So this is able to be done inside the mixer. It's also able to be done on the timeline. So by making a selection on the timeline, either by clips or by just the timeline selection itself, we can then map the selection to the console and there we are.